everybody, Coastal Kate 401 here at the Audrain Young Timers car show. Really kind of cool, everything from the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. Instead of old timers, we have the young timers. So we're going to take a look. So we're at the car show. We're here with Jim, and he has a what year is the Jeep? 1990. A 1990 Jeep. Is it a Wrangler? It is a Wrangler. Okay. How long have you had it? Since 1995. Great. I bought it in Honolulu. In Hon and how did you get it back? Um, it, I drove it really, really fast, and got it to San Francisco. <laughs> Bigger tires that floated. Awesome. Yeah, I put it on a ship. Yeah, I, I figured that. The Navy paid for that. <laughs> oh, the Navy paid for that. That's good. Now, what what um, modifications have you made to it since oh, you've had it? Let's see. Put on headers, which is larger exhaust. Uh, put on a Holley four barrel carburetor because it's got a carbureted engine. And 1990 was the last year they made carbureted engines. So when I take it to, say, Toyota, which I really can't do, but to get like a uh, safety inspection, which you do every two years. Mm -hmm. I can't ask them to do anything with it, like tune it up, because if they open the hood and they see a carburetor, the young kids just look at it and go, "What is that?" Right, they have no right. idea because they can't do like you know an air code check on a carburetor because it's you know mechanical. Right. They have no idea what to do. It. So I just say, "Don't do anything." Do the safety inspection and get back. <laughs> Great. <laughs> So, um, what is the most fun thing about owning a Jeep? Because Jeep owners are really pretty passionate about Jeeps. So tell me a little bit about why you own a Jeep and what's so great about it. Because it's really fun to drive without the top and the doors. That's it's the, the best, best reason. It's Unless the best it's reason. like, hey, that's That's awesome. Do they still do the Jeep Wave? Well, they do. Um, but ever since, the Jeep Wave has always been a huge thing for the people that have Jeeps. But ever since they made the soccer mom four-door Jeep, yes. it's been kind of ruined because no true Jeep owner wants to wave to a soccer mom Jeep. And you know what? It's funny you said that because I just heard that, that people don't want to wave to the four-door Jeeps. No, we do not. Because it's not... But you can't okay. tell from the front usually. Right. So it's kind of like, should I wave or should I not wave? Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of ruined it. Because most people that own it, they have no idea, the new ones. And they're everywhere. Everywhere. They the are. popular car. I did learn something the other day about Jeeps, and I've had this one for, well, since 1995. So, apparently there's something to do with Wranglers and ducks. People put ducks, ducks? rubber duckies. Oh, apparently I... Apparently it's a Jeep thing, and I don't know, I fought, bought my first Jeep in 1990. I have known nothing about this duck Jeep. Though. I have not heard Maybe of things. Maybe it's the four-door Jeeps. It, I don't know. You know what? It probably is. It does sound like a soccer mom. It does. Put a rubber ducky on a car. It does. I don't want a rubber ducky on a uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. So tell me, is there anything else you'd like to tell me about your Jeep that's unique? Oh, uh, unique. Well, there was 18 months that I lived here that it was the only car I had, and I didn't put the top on the whole 18 months. If it snowed, I'd just, you know, wear a ski gear. And, you know, sometimes it was like really, really snowing, blizzards, what have you. So one three-day weekend, um, I parked out in front of the house, and I came out two days later, and there was a, no kidding, full three-tiered snowman in the driver's seat. Oh, no way. Scarf, coal eyes, carrot nose, mouth. I mean, it was a lot of work putting the snowman 
Um, so somebody made a snowman in your somebody Jeep? Somebody made a snowman in the Jeep. I love Very it. Good snowman. It had sticks for arms on the steering wheel. It was hysterical. Oh my gosh. And Kate and I were having a yard sale maybe 10 years later. I didn't know who did it. It took 10 years to find out. This kid's grandmother came in and was talking to us and she's like, do you have the black Jeep? She's like, yeah. My grandkids built a snowman in that like 10 years ago. Oh, no way. I, like, oh. I love it. I love it. The mystery was solved. Yes, well, great. I'm just going to take another little walk around. Um, but thank you for sharing with me. I am a Jeep fanatic. Right. So we're here at the Ardrain uh, Young Timers. So um, lots of cars to see. Um, this is one of my favorites because I'm a Jeep fan too. So I'm a little uh, biased. So at the back because I put this funny life ring on it for fun today. Awesome. I have no idea why. It was in the exchange when I walked in. I'm like, oh, I'll put that in the back. Awesome. Well, thank you for talking to me today. I'm just going to take a quick look around. of the cars, 1990s.
is on. It's nice though. Yeah, we did the, we did the carpet ourselves. A lot of the stuff is the conversion company, but we've been slowly kind of bringing it a little more stylish. How long did it take you? Uh oh, they gonna be All on together. YouTube? Or? It could be. So this is Alex, and he has an Econoline 1984. We were just looking at. So can you tell me how long you've been working on this? How long? It's probably a labor of love. How long have you been uh, doing this? So we've actually had this thing since uh, May of this year. We, uh, we were initially looking for kind of a work van and also a chase vehicle for our Corvette. And we bought this thing. We found it in a forest in the middle of Maine. Couldn't believe how rust free it was and how perfect everything was. So we thought we couldn't make it a work vehicle, so we just brought it to the shows and we slowly started doing this carpet. That was that was a few just, a few days spread over a few weeks. The carpet it was actually the from carpet's Job. It's beautiful, isn't it? Oh yeah, wow. it's from Job Lot, believe it or not, Ocean State Job Lot. Um, you were actually able to find that pattern at Job Lot. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, no, I found it months and months ago before we even bought, bought a van. I just I took a picture because I liked it. One day, I'm, me and my father were sitting around and I showed him the picture of the carpet. He goes, "That." That's it. That's what we're putting up. Um, that was that was it. We you know we got rid of some of the gray. We painted a lot of stuff black to make it fit in a little bit better. Um, we've been redoing the underside. We just got done doing uh, the rotor slash hubs, pads, uh, calipers on the front. The wheels actually came off of a conversion van my father had for many, many years ago, but when he got rid of it, when vans weren't worth anything, mm -hmm. he thought these wheels are worth something, so I should keep them. And lo and behold, they got, they got a, a oh, second Oh, good life. thing you did, right? You know, so it's, it's still got ways to go. You know, we're gonna clean up the motor a bit, maybe do a rebuild. The headline is definitely on the way out. Um, do you use this as a personal car, or is it something that you just take to shows? I, it's, it's a party wagon. <laughs> it is, too. It's, it's, you know, we, um, what I can say on your on your video here, but we like to get stoned in it and um, drive around. We take it to the shows. People like, you know, it, yeah. it gets so much more attention than our Corvette. It's unbelievable. Oh, I bet you it know, does. You know, every, it's it's very nostalgic. Oh yeah, exactly. Everybody walks up to it. Oh, we had one of these. I remember this. I knew someone that had one of these. They look in it. They see it. It's been a really neat experience for something we've only been doing since May. Yeah, that's exactly why I came over. I remember these vans. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, no, he's my father's advanced my whole life. I learned how to drive on a Ford E E E three hundred and fifty. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we like them. Well, thank you for spending the time. Of course, happy to happy to spread the word. Excellent, excellent. All right, well, have a great day. Thank you. So we're here with Andrew in his Toyota Mark II. Um, he has some really cool things that he has in the car, or on top of the car, as you can see. He has some kind of neat little props, and we'll show you the rest of them later. But how long have you had uh, the car? And how many um, renovations or modifications uh, have you made to honestly, it? Honestly, none. I haven't had to do anything. The most I did was I replaced the radio. Uh, this was uh, imported from Japan. And uh, their FM radios uh, operate on a different range of frequencies. You go to maybe like 101.5 or something here. In Japan, that range is like 75 to 90. So we can't get any stations here with it. Uh, not even like a Bluetooth FM translator from Amazon came and do any of that. So I had to buy an aftermarket radio to, to, to correct that so I could at least listen to something in the car. Wow, um, isn't that something? Otherwise, there's flues and filters. That's all I've had to do on it. And it has roughly 10 kilometers, but it works out to about 90,000 miles, 89,000 ish. <laughs> and so this is your personal car that you drive? I drive it every day. That's great. Even through the winter. <laughs> great. I and, shouldn't be doing that, but I do. And Toyotas are known for being really um, reliable cars. Yeah, this is this so? is Japan's equivalent to the Camry, basically. Oh, interesting. Except that a front-wheel drive like our Camrys are, you go rear-wheel drive. Great. And I'm just going to go back over here and take a look at this cool stuff you have back here. So now this is a Nintendo setup. This, uh, this is the Super Famicom, the Japanese version of our Super Nintendo. The yeah. controllers are the same and this, the colors are different, but that's the only difference. Between the two. I love how you have it set up, though. <laughs> I, it's it's so nostalgic. I'm using a little portable camping battery tucked away in the trunk right now, all hidden, uh, just so I can run it outside without having the key on. Uh, that way, I don't kill my battery because <laughs> they would probably die by now. Great. And do you do a lot of our drain uh, events? Or is uh, this is my first one. Great. Um, Great. I heard about it earlier this year. 
at the museum, I went to visit their exhibition, and uh, they were saying they would have like, a Japanese car, or just a general 80s, 90s car kind of show for in the mall. And uh, kind of put it in the back of the mind, forgot about it for a while, and then a couple weeks ago, oh crap, this is happening. So I went and ordered a ticket quick, and I was lucky to get in still. That's and, great. And uh, so here I am today. Great, and it's a great turnout today. <laughs> and I, I watched everybody go by your car, and they've looked at the Nintendo, but the other thing that they've looked at is your Polaroid. Yes. You have a Polaroid camera there, which is really kind of cool. Early 90s, it still works. Well, Look still at that. Film for it today. Look at uh, that. It's not cheap because of nostalgia reasons, but uh, it works just the same. Uh, and I've been developing some photos in Dark Pocket. Uh, it's upside down. That one's still developing, but ignore that. Um, it's an overcast day today, so getting the lighting quite right is a little. That is so cool. I, it's so nostalgic to me. I remember the Polaroids. I love the Polaroids, and I know everybody that's been walking around Everyone has. Loves to get them too. Uh, I go to work with Harvey sometimes. I'll walk around with the camera, and people notice I have this, and they go, "Oh, is that, does that work? You taking photos?" I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, what? Well, uh, what do you have a car? And uh, they go, "Yeah." We walk over to them. We talk them for a little while, and towards the end, I offer a photo just because it's not about the money. It's more about just people. They always see and hear about these things, and they most people don't have these anymore. No, they so don't. Like to give it to them, they put it on their dashboard. They love it. They play it. It it's, makes their day. It's definite, and it does make people smile. And that's I, my reward. It is. It is. So. I was as I was watching you though. I was over with a, a couple of friends, and we had talked to you about the Polaroid, and all yeah. of us were like, "Whoa, we love the Polaroids." It's, yeah, I'm, I'm shocked that we can still get the film. Uh, for a while, for several years, you couldn't anymore. And then another company came in under the Polaroid name and started reproducing it again. So it's not cheap, because reasons, I guess, I don't know why, yep. but, uh, but now you can release them again and you can release that again. Yeah, taking digital photos is great and all, you get the instant gratification, take it on social media, whatever you want to do, but the anticipation of taking a photo and hoping you got it right, whether you do it through this or an old style film camera, it's, it's, uh, having that physical item in front of you is just more satisfying than rewarding to me. Absolutely. And, uh, and people love to see that. They love to see just you walk around, take a photo of their car, whether it's for myself or for them. And uh, they just love to see it. Uh, it's a lot of smiles. You're bringing a lot of happiness to people between the Polaroid camera and your awesome car and the Nintendo and the boom box and everything else on the top. I had to go buy G-Cell batteries for the first time in yeah. guns to power that. Yeah. So I was going to run the CDs that I had in the back window, but I figured with the TV. It was good. Uh, so just having the radio out there alone, I figured. Yeah. I don't want to be too much. Yeah, no, it was, I think it's great. And I think you did a great job. And so thank you for talking to me today. And good luck with everything. Thank you very much. Thank you. In the 1980s division is A8, MHP, and Whitney on their way to tennis. Yes, this is a living page from the Preppy Handbook. <laughs> and let's get a picture exactly. Sean. And his lucky fan. Thank you very much. And now for the moment another, another repeat winner, the 1986 Renault R5 Turbo 2 of David Geisinger. If you had any more ribbons, we would uh, have to do something with charge or something. much for coming. The band will be back on in a few minutes. You can enjoy the music, the lights, and the great food and drink. Thank you all for coming, and be on the lookout for our next Audrain Young Timers event next spring. And, of course, we'll see you at the Audrain Newport Concours and Motor Week starting on Thursday. Thank you.